Hi guys, it's Claris and today I am going to do a quick tutorial on um, super easy and simple watercolor flowers. And uh, this tutorial will be aimed mainly towards uh, brides who want to do their own invitations and own artwork. So if you've never done watercolor before um, and you're getting married or you know someone who's getting married and you want to do uh, their invitations, this tutorial is for you. I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. I'm going to show you how to compose a little array uh, or a bouquet of flowers and then do some on the side um, so you can kind of use it for other elements throughout the invitations. So for this, I am using my Canson paper, Canson watercolor paper. Uh, for brushes, I am using the Squirrel Mop Brush 1, um, Silver Black Velvet 4, and the Princeton Neptune number 8. For colors, I am using my Hansa Yellow in the Daniel Smith, the New Gamboge, which is like a orangey yellow. I am also using the pink, which is uh, a rose, Quin Quinacridin Rose. So this is what I'm using and let's get started. Okay, so to begin, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how we're placing or where we're placing the flowers. So here's what we're going to be doing. Uh, as you all know, I like to have my arrangements in odd numbers. So we're going to do three florals or three flowers with some uh, edges, like smaller flowers around the edges and then some greenery. So we'll start off with one flower here, another one off to the side, and then one facing on the top with greenery. All right, so to begin, let us start with the number eight. So I have some color on here already. And I'm just going to take some yellow, which is right here. And I put it near the blue because I want to mix it with the blue and get some nice um, <clears throat> green for the greenery. I'm also going to mix it with some of the orange. So you just want, basically you want a yellow for the center, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and do how I start off all my florals. Just painting a little bit off to the side. And we want the flower to be facing upward this way. So I'm just putting down some color, very fine, like the center of it. Then I'm going to take my, my squirrel mop brush and I'm going to get some of the reddy, pinky color. And I just want more water, just a little bit of the color. And I'm going to lay on the color like so. So from the outside all the way in, oops, and touching the yellow so it kind of seeps up. We want to do that. Keep pulling it in. I'm taking, I want to get rid of some water and pull more of the yellow, the sorry, the pink in. And now I just got a lot of pink, which is great. And I'm just going to do these motions in C's. I'm just taking water without taking any more. Actually, no, I will take more color because I'm going to do it on this side now. And lay it on like that. And then I just want to lightly... make these C's around, okay? And what we're doing is we're just basically creating layers for this and now using this brush which has the yellow, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a touch here and there while it is still damp. And I wanna keep the white space. So keep the white space, guys, because it looks good. And just adding some yellow around in different areas and then I'm going to go back with this brush and add the yellow. 
sorry, the pink. So it's just adding your colors and getting a good mix. So now we have a nice bulb right here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do another bulb off to the side facing this way. And so for that, I'm just going to keep the pink and just go ahead and use some of my orange. And do something like this. So again, we want to do a flower that's facing this way. So we'll do a basic drag like that. And then getting some water so that I can get and a little bit of pink just at the tip. I'm just going to do that. And now I'll just take this brush, some water on it, and just touch the edges so it can soften a bit. Okay, and then you want to do a stroke on the outside like that. Just like that. And then we're just going to take more of the orange from here and add it at the tip so it can spread nicely. And it gives you more of that 2D dimensional feel. Okay. And now I just want to do the overlapping side on there. So I'm, I've taken off most of the color and I'm just going to do a light what's meant to look like a like the overlaying petal on the other end. And then once that dries, we'll, we'll be fine. So we'll keep that that way and then let's just do the leaves right now. So for the leaves I'm going to use this brush of mine, the number four. And I have some yellow with the blue so I'm just going to mix that up. And I'm not crazy about the green. I prefer my green to be a little more like a hunter green and we all have like some pretty bright colors. So I'm going to improvise last minute and get um, more of a hunter green or you could what you could do is you could add some brown to this green so let's just do that just get some brown and add it to the green and you get like a nice darker hunter forest green and then once we have that we're just going to touch a little bit of the edge here so that you can see some green and then we'll do the leaves. So the leaves are super simple. So the leaves are super simple. I rolled up my sleeves and uh, just so there's not a lot of black. So the leaves are super simple like I was saying. Um, you're just gonna get some on the number four and find a direction that you would like the leaves to go in. Normally when you're doing flowers for invitations, or things like that, you want it off to the top corners or at the bottom in the center. So think about that when you're creating this painting. So I think I will like mine to kind of go this way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a flush, a flourish, a flush flourish, kind of like that, and then I'm just going to hold down my brush and then do this. And there's my leaf. And then I just put some water on here just to lighten the color that I have on my brush some. And I'm going to go on the other side and do that. And so because this is loose, you want it to kind of trail off that way. And I want to darken the edges there just to give it that 3D kind of look. So I'm getting more green on my brush. And I'm just going to, while it's still damp, I'm just going to make sure that I'm able to get that color to spread. And if it's not dark enough, then I suggest just getting like a dark, 
darker green, like another color, into the mix just to emphasize and get some nice results. Alright, so that's that. Um, and then I'll just kind of do more leaves in like in the similar fashion. Um, so I'll do another one here and just kind of let it trail. And if you want to add some yellow to it, like you can just do that. Just swatch some, some yellow into it. That could look like a younger leaf. And then I'll just do one that's coming out from the flower itself that way. Okay, and then while I still have this color on this brush, I'm just going to place these leaves in another area just so that we have that color consistency. So I think I will do one over here. So we have this going in this direction. So I'll do one here. And again, when you draw the leaf from out to in, you're pushing the color inside, which darkens your stem and all that good stuff. So you want that to happen. It's a nice thing. It's a beautiful thing. Run with it. So those are fairly easy. As I mentioned earlier, you want to just get the insides darker. So just go in while it is still damp and darken it. So you can get that nice 3D two color effect going on. Okay, so that's good. Um, what else? Can we add leaves anywhere else? Yes, we sure can. I'm just going to add more brown to my green um, and create leaves. Where else? Let's do some over here. And I want it to be darker, so I'm just going to do that and then just press it down and get some nice leaves going on there. Alright, so there we go. And it gives like a nice contrast with the with the bright colors that we have going on. So don't feel shy to use your colors. And then just because I have some there, some here, some here. I'll just do some over here. And just add more of that brown to it with some of the green. And as I mentioned from the out in, and if you can do it from the inside out as well, my only, uh, suggestion would be to make sure that you drag the color in if you do that and then just yeah just let let it trail and let it be loose uh, and then finally you want to do your little floral touches here and there so for that uh, I would pick let's pick a purple I have some purple on here already so I'm going to use my Um, Princeton number eight and I'm just gonna get some of this purple that I have on here okay it's mixed up pretty bad so let me just make sure you get get I get all the water off and then I get some of the red and mix it in there with that blue so I can get a nice purple so all I'm doing is I'm going to create like little berries And in fact, you could even use blue if you want, like you don't have to use the purple. What I think I need a little bit of blue. All right, so uh, berries, where can I place them? I will place some here. So literally just making the circle and then I'll take the other brush and you'll see why with just water in it maybe a little bit of the pink at the tip I'm going to create another circle 
and you see how it touches this and the purple is seeping in. We like that, we want that, so I'm just gonna go in with this and add more purple. There we go. And then finally, I'll do a third one over here, kind of like overlapping over the flower. And leave the white spaces, it's nice. <clears throat> There's absolutely nothing wrong with white space. It gives it that nice, free look, um, loose look, rather. And then using this, I'm just gonna create the stems. You can do another one if you want. So just think about how you want the placement for these to be and then work with that. Um, you can make sure that they get lighter as you go higher and just kind of taper off. Taper off as in like just fade out. Um, and if you still feel like this is too much purple or pink and it's too close to that, I would suggest going into a blue getting some blue and just adding it on the insides. And then that just changes the color once it dries up. Okay, so do that. And then you can leave it as is or you can have it kind of trail down and mix it up. How you, how you do this bit is entirely a preference thing. So feel free to experiment and see what you would rather do here, okay? Um, let me finish doing what I'm doing right here and then we can move on to the next thing. Um, you might want to get make sure that you get a blue that mixes with the purple, pinky, and make it look more natural as opposed to stark difference so see that has like now that I've mixed it and it looks more bluey than before it looked kind of like a fluorescent blue in the pink so keep that in mind um, we're just gonna do I'll do it I'll do a few more of these just in the corner here just to make sure that it's there as well uh, so it's in two places and it's not random and out of the blue, so to speak. So I'll just create that here. And now because I mixed this color again, it, it looks slightly different, the purple, then that's okay. It doesn't have to be the same. Of course, if you want it to be the same, then you would have to make sure that you're not, that you're using the same method for creating this. So I'm just gonna add some blue here. Just mix that with the purple. A little more water. So this is dry, so I can put my hand on there. That's fine. And then I'll just take this. And what did I get? I think I got green or brown for this. <clears throat> and just create the stems. There we go. That's it. So that's all I'm going to do. Just maybe add some light green on there just to make it look like leaves. <coughs> and uh, what else? So now you can, so we have the outer florals, we have the greens, we have your two main flowers. Uh, I did say three, so we're going to do a third one and this one's going to be bud. So let's just make it coming out on this end and then we'll do a little more greenery around um, to make sure that it's it's got good shape so for this bud let us do actually I prefer if the bud is over here and then we can do more green here so let's do this let's get some of the pink and we'll make it the pink bud you can make it the orange bud it's really up to you um, and what I'll do is 
place some water placement using light pink from here with the squirrel mop brush and I'm just gonna do it like this and because it's a bud you're just doing the same shape as we've been doing all this time and leaving it like that and then going in with this I have more of the pink so I'm just gonna add the pink in a stroke and just at the edges there and just make sure that your water consistency is good and then this way you can get that nice flowy effect and finally I'm going to go in with the four and get some green and then just make sure that I have some green at the bottom of it and then just have your stem coming up to it or you could just leave it as is and just fill it with some greenery it's really a preference again <clears throat> how you would like to tackle that um, I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and 2d like I normally like to make it and then just possibly end off with like a leaf or two All right, so that's that. Um, what else can we do? Um, yes, and now we can just go around and create more leaves just to kind of fill it up and get it to be looking more robust. And these leaves, honestly, they can be just so loose, just like draw a line and then something like that. And give them some direction so if you want it to be like flowing out there absolutely just kind of give it direction and just have it flow this way right and then remember my thing about the leaves like bring your bring the dark color on the inside and darken the stems right so something like that is good enough um, really just like use your thought process or like based on what you know you want to create and just place the leaves in that direction or have it go in that direction. <clears throat> I'm just gonna have some over here as well because what I like to do when I create these and create my invitations are I normally just have it from all directions and then when I'm placing it on the invitations I kind of twirl it around to see what which end works for me and I'll just run with that so really think about that so keep it open-ended so you can do lots of other stuff as well and I'm using the number four to create my my leaves but feel free to use the Princeton number eight that also will create really nice leaves <clears throat> I've got some red purple on here I'm just gonna get some of the green and Create some there. Okay, and then uh, lastly, if you want to create any more of these fillers, you can do the green circle buds or you can do some that are kind of this manner. 
let me show you and these are actually fun um, so I'll take this kind of turkey color that I have going on and I'm going to just create green stems okay so let's just do the first one here okay and I'm just gonna go in and create that and I'm just laying down strokes like leaves okay and I'm gonna take this guy make sure it's just water on there and I'm just going to create little strokes And what this does is it gives you that that effect, a uh, monochromatic effect. And you can go back with this where you have most of your color and re-emphasize areas so it kind of seeps into things nicely. And then you can also just add a slight variation of green so it gives you a nice 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 monochromatic look and then just taper off with like dots and then there you have like a super romantic looking kind of like a delphinium almost right or it could be a leaf so work with that guys and you can create something really nice. So this is essentially what it would look like. I'm going to fast forward, I'll, like I'll do this on another area around here somewhere. And just for the sake of keeping this shorter, because we're already, this is this has become quite long. Um, I'll fast forward it and then you can see how it turns out. All right, guys, so this is what it turned out um, to look like. And uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I mentioned uh, having elements that you can create to, you know, kind of sporadically put throughout your invitations and whatever else you're creating. Um, just keep in mind, like everything that I've shown you here, you can put it together. You can also create these separately. So, like, say if you just want to do a bud and these little delphinium type things off to the side, then absolutely do it separately. These I hear they're like either berries or rose hips. Again, you can do those because they're like a nice little touch to add off to a corner or something like that. So just keep that in mind. But this is what my finished item looks like. Um, so go out there and create your own and let's see what you come up with. Uh, in your comment in the comment section below please let me know what you guys think i love hearing from you guys if you do end up doing this tutorial and creating your own invitations i would absolutely love to see it so follow me on instagram and facebook and send me pictures guys thanks so much for watching and we will chat soon bye